So a small thing that had not even developed turned into a monster storm, except uh, it never was supposed to be a small storm. It echoes a tweet from Royal Caribbean, which says that the ship encountered an unexpectedly severe storm off Cape Hatteras. However, as we've been talking about, it's not really true. A uh, marine forecast from the National Weather Service from back on Wednesday first noted the risk of strong wind and waves. In fact, on this very show last Wednesday, we detailed the upcoming coastal storm for the weekend. There's Mike Bettis and Carl Parker in the lab highlighting the impacts from that coastal storm, including the risk of wind and waves from the Carolina coast all the way through New England. So now that ship's headed back to Cape Liberty, New Jersey, where the cruise started, but due back Wednesday. But we want to dive into the meteorology, what we knew as the science in general, and, and really the timeline of when we knew it. Mm -hmm. And then it, we're going to ask some unanswered questions as well. And you're probably asking them at home too. But Carl, let's start off with basically what we knew about the setup leading into this storm. Well, you know, the models were differing a little bit on the intensity of the storm, but we knew there was going to be a storm and we knew it had the potential to be a very strong strong storm. In fact, one of our best models was really consistently indicating that. But the most important thing is what was the wave forecast? And we want to show you the wave forecast from the National Weather Service, because really they are sort of the governing body in this matter. I mean, they're mm -hmm. private weather enterprises, but you want to know what the official entities are saying. And this was back on Wednesday. This is on mind. Wednesday. On Wednesday, they were forecasting seas up to 29 feet on Sunday evening. And then the next day they had a forecast that came out on Thursday outlining the area and then showing you a forecast of waves of 23 to 31 feet on Sunday night. So they were really all over this in terms of the wave height forecast. Forgetting about the winds and the rest of it, the waves are what really matter in terms of ships, obviously, mm -hmm. and they had this forecast nailed. And, and Sarah, we were talking about maybe they were looking at a forecast of just the winds because yes, the yeah. winds at one point were forecast to be less than what it turned mm -hmm. into when this storm eventually turned into what it turned into. Right, and you know, and that was that was picked up even at like Thursday evening. We mm -hmm. already had gusts of easily in the range of 45 or 40 to 50 miles per hour, and that was only an area that we had observations, had buoy data actually show a forecast for, but all those areas in between, you know, that that's also something that you've also got to, if you're not sailing through it, you're not going to know, but his, his line about this small storm that unexpectedly blew up, okay, First of all, that is the definition of bombogenesis. When we say these storms rapidly deepen, they go from a eh, kind of low pressure system to a bomb of low pressure that are producing 75 mile per hour winds and gusts higher than that. So if you had listened to the forecast, you know it's going to start out as a small little storm and then blow up into something huge. Yeah, and, and setting aside their, the weather service forecast, we saw this in the modeling for a long time. And here, this is where they doubled down essentially. Yeah, this was mm -hmm. the newest statement from Royal Caribbean saying that the weather that the ship experienced was greater than what was forecasted. And, and I'll let that go that forecasted isn't the right way to say. Mm the past sense of forecast. So, you know, we, we imagine we're almost sure that they have their own meteorologists. They have to. And so they were looking at the modeling mm -hmm. and we want to show you what the modeling was showing us. So okay. here's last Friday morning's forecast from the European model showing you a huge area of wind on the southeast coast in red there. Thursday's forecast showing you the same thing. This is going for the same period. Now looking at Sunday evening, there's Thursday's forecast. Same thing showing up really well there. Look at last Wednesday morning's forecast. Same thing. Huge area of wind even back to last Tuesday. It wasn't quite as pronounced, but it's certainly showing up even on Tuesday. Yeah. And a week out to have it showing up it's and still happen. Yeah, I mean, come on. Yeah, I, I don't know. And you know, they, they are, they have turned around now. They're headed back towards New Jersey instead of continuing on their trip down towards the south. It's a it, it much smoother ocean right now. So for the 4,000 passengers, no longer dealing with scenes like this, but this is what they Gosh. were dealing with Look on Sunday. See the little whirlwind there, you know, as it's in this little cubby and the kind of winds are kind of going in around there, just swirling the furniture around. And Jeff uh, on Twitter uh, reached out to us, WTV, that says the ship is coming back up the East Coast now for docking on Wednesday. Hmm, Clipper Energy transfer timing off of New Jersey, hashtag waves. Hmm. So yes, it's smooth right now, but Jeff is putting the two stories that we've been doing tonight together and saying there's another storm that's coming right in time for midweek. Will that kick up the waves as they're trying to dock? 
on Wednesday. And, and the thing we were wondering about is, you know, maybe they feel as if though they can handle a certain amount of waves. Right. You know, so so maybe there's something that we don't know about there, but that's not what we're talking. We're talking about what they're saying about the forecast. Exactly. Yeah. Th th those ships are huge. They've probably gone through worse uh, in the long, in the grand scheme of probably, things. Probably, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's all about the worst possible outcome and, and, and really doubling down and blaming the meteorologist when all is said and done. Yep. Uh, good discussion, guys. Thanks so much.